Hello, I'm uh, Mike Vermey from the company Certhan. We are an AVF member and as an AVF member I'd like to welcome you to the International uh, uh, Association of Vertical Farm Conference here in Bangalore, India. I feel that uh, this is the technology for the future and uh, I feel that uh, I have a commitment to support the movement uh, with my knowledge. Uh, since I am a basically a floriculturist, I, horticulture is a beautiful subject, you know, it is the only thing which can address uh, food security, nutritional security and environmental security. All are looking about uh, food and nutritional security, but I am there to fight for environmental security. I uh, want to tell people that uh, with help of plants we can improve the air quality, lot of pollution mitigation and we can, I want to build climate resilient cities. You know, I want to help uh, urbanites, so that's why I'm here. Our uh, Prime Minister has declared around 98 smart cities. Probably this will suit very well to a smart cities. Smart buildings and smart cities. Smart cities and smart buildings, of course. And I feel the possibilities for integrating architecture, energy systems and food systems together. And whether they are at the scale of apartments or individual buildings. Well, actually, I was uh, Dixon Despenier called me when he was writing his book, and we talked a lot about aeroponics, and he requested some pictures of aeroponic systems, which I supplied to him, and we became friends, and he included me in his book. And uh, then I became a consultant to Farmed Here uh, in Chicago and to help them develop their aeroponic system for vertical farming. So I've been at it for a while. Kristen Jimmerman and Mohan Bajikar. Yeah. He initiated this uh, movement. Well, I've not had much interaction, but today uh, we had a very interesting conversation uh, with Christine, and we've been discussing various opportunities. I have a couple of friends who are here from Malaysia, and we are discussing about how to go about doing some things in Malaysia, and probably she will be visiting uh, beginning next year, so things are happening to roll. As I said in my talk early morning, I started with the whole thing first because I went to Dr. Dixon Despomier. Christine Zimmerman, the lady who was speaking, you look up to her? Yeah, I, I, I look up to her. I just spoke to her. We, she's very smart. Yeah, yeah, we very, very knowledgeable person. And I think she's the right person to guide somebody new in this field. And I, in that case, I've already spoken to her. We're trying to open up a Malaysian chapter of this association and we will try to do some work with the government of Malaysia. That's how we start, we intend to go away with things. Okay. <laughs> Christine uh, is one of the most inspiration personal for us into this area and Richard uh, Stoner as well. Well, I like Dixon because of the fact that he first promoted this idea on a very macro level. Uh, he doesn't have really any technology that he's providing, but he came up with this concept of let's take advantage of, of commercial properties that are kind of defunct and, and let's revitalize them so it's really good for real estate and it really helps us be able to produce food at a lower cost because of these buildings are, are sort of distressed and we can react, re reactivate a community or an environment because of the concept of the vertical farming. Uh, Lieutenant Commander C.V. Prakash, uh, he is called uh, father of uh, Indian hydroponics and uh, well I learned a lot of things from him and uh, there is still a long way to run, a strong, long way to go. I think it's going on a good track. It's exposing people to a lot of new ideas. And of course, they are trying to se segregate the economic aspect of it and the technical aspect. But it's, on the whole, I think it's inspiring for many new people. Uh, the conference was good. Uh, it's a first attempt. And it was uh, good that uh, people were brought to, it was brought to the people's light that there is something called vertical farming and uh, it gives hopes, hope to people in urban areas where people feel there's no land but now every terrace becomes an area for vertical farming so you actually multiply the yields and you can uh, grow local and eat local. It's a very diverse audience. When the audience is diverse the expectations are very different, the questions are very different. 
Well, what I like is the fact that there's so many scientists and researchers, as well as students being here, because I think the future is these people. Um, you know, I was young once too, and I was inspired by these concepts, and I think that that's as kind of the transfer of technology, you could say, of know-how, that these people here will take these ideas and expand upon them and develop their own systems and their own concepts that could be, you know, sort of uh, an evolution of what is happening here. Yeah, it, it is a great conference and we get to know each other. There are many like-minded people here and uh, it's not about only meeting the uh, prospective clients, but it's more to, a, more to meeting to the business people. Those are in the same field and share the ideas, share the knowledge, help each other. And uh, we came up with brilliant ideas of having association. And that's great. Uh, simply, it's great. Well, it, it probably needs more conferences like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, we'll just yeah. It, it's from what we've seen so far, it's it's a great start, and I suppose one of the things we're looking for is that um, good examples of um, some of the ideas that have been um, spoken about at the conference. So if people get some sort of hard information and, and details of uh, what what people are working on, and maybe open source some of some of the work, I think that will really move on the uh, the idea uh, much quicker. So. Uh, what we repeated earlier, the integration of two, two, three disciplines. One, as I said, the technical research part from the agriculture and food industry, design community, mm -hmm. and of course, sociologists and how it will integrate with the cultural fabric. And that's the way it would evolve. Okay, actually, it just needs a lot of PR as more people become aware of what it can do and bring forth. Like what I'm doing now. Uh, what you're doing now, because... <laughs> It's uh, basically, first we need to create the awareness and the rest, I think, will fall in place. Once people start realizing the importance of it, then it will catch up. As I said, if it is really want to take up, there are two things. One is the government, the second thing is the corporate. So if they come into this uh, area, probably it will pick up very fast. Uh, the real money needs to, needs to come into the vertical farming now. It is profitable, uh, it is sustainable. Uh, it reduces carbon footprints and what not. Every, every good thing is associ associate, associated with uh, vertical farming and uh, yeah, real good money uh, we are expecting into this uh, vertical farming. Uh, the vertical farming movement basically needs uh, uh, government uh, support in one, one sense and uh, more than the government support, uh, it's also about public participation and universities, research centers and uh, private individuals and corporates corporate companies that can actually take this forward yeah okay the industry needs guidance basically as i'm talking in the context of malaysia it needs the guidance because basically we don't have any knowledge of it so we should get the right partner that, that's the main important thing so i think what we really need is 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 people who can promote and provide advice provide some of the raw materials and kickstart the process of people trying to get involved and you get significant mass to do that then I think it will take off on its own so, so more people more expertise more technology and Indianization and Indianization okay thank you very much for this thank interview you. very interesting yeah